Not that we're recommending it, mind you, but more than a few disenchanted workers these days are mustering up the gumption to tell the boss, I quit. So how's that working out for them? Our cover story is reported by Tony DeCopel. In 2009, Bill Murphy Jr. landed a top-level law job, making big bucks. But when he showed up for work... I realized pretty quickly I wasn't the right person for that spot. What was it about a competitive six-figure income wasn't attractive to you? <laughs> yeah, I know that's a question a lot of people would ask. That's right. On his very first day, Murphy already wanted out. I recall going to the orientation and, you know, one of the speakers got up. Hi, I'm John Smith. I've been here for 21 years and three months, so that means I have, you know, eight years plus to retire. And that became a running joke with a few of the other speakers that got up. But that's not really what you say if you love your work and no. you really want to come in there every day. So rather than count his own days behind a desk, he did something you won't find in most career playbooks. He quit on day two, telling his boss, I am really very sorry. I can tell that I made a big mistake in accepting this job. The move was radical, but the mindset not so uncommon. According to a recent CBS News poll, more than half of Americans with full-time jobs say they daydream at least once in a while about leaving those jobs behind. Do you think the fantasy of quitting your job is more prevalent today than it was a generation ago? I think it is. And for many people, it is a fantasy, unfortunately. Michelle Singletary, who writes about personal finance for The Washington Post, says employers are largely to blame. I think the companies broke the contract because they made us expendable at every level. I mean, it got to the point where they could boost their stock prices by firing people. And people are saying, if that's the case, I don't owe you my entire life. That may help explain why some employees now put early retirement at the top of their to-do list. But making that happen takes work. You've got to save a substantial amount of your salary, you know, upwards of 40, 50, 60 percent. We met Singletary at a bookstore in the sort of New York City neighborhood where window shopping is the only shopping you can do if you plan on quitting your job. So if you're 25 right now and you have it in your head that you want to retire early, to be clear, the things you would have to do in order to save are, sounds like not have kids. <laughs> you can have kids, you can't have five. How big is your house? Not very big. It, not too big. Can you go out to eat at restaurants? You can every once in a while. You're not going to be taking a $5,000 cruise, no. You essentially have to ignore every cue from our culture, every commercial on TV. My husband and I keep our cars until we're on a first-name basis with the local tow truck drivers. <laughs> and we don't care. That's the sort of thing Susan Emerson might do. I remember telling my accountant, I'm going to save half of my income. He said, no, you're not. Don't give me that. I said, watch me. Before retiring at age 47, she kept close tabs on everything she spent. And we do mean everything. I had this little notebook. I you know, bought a Coke. I wrote that down. You bought a Coke? You wrote it down? Yeah. Thanks to that tight budget and some savvy investing, Emerson, now 61, has spent more than a decade pursuing her lifelong passion, art. They're interpreting disaster situations in a kind of fantastical way. To do that, she walked away from a career as a physician. How did it feel closing the door for the last time and driving out of that parking lot? The best part was turning in the beeper because they can't get me anymore. <laughs> when I read articles about people who retire early, it's often a doctor or a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Can a person with a regular job ever hope to retire early? Yes, absolutely. Early retirement isn't just for people making six figures. It's you, but it's you making different choices. Your early retirement may not be some big villa in Florida. It may just be a nice two-bedroom condo where you live, yeah. you know, and a car that you have had for 20 years. How did your mom react when you told her? Oh, God. She had a fit. Really? Yes. She told her friends that I had gotten sick and had to retire because that, I guess, seemed like a more acceptable reason to retire. I, I don't know. Legendary football coach Vince Lombardi may help explain her mom's reaction. A famous quote attributed to him is woven deep into the fabric of American culture. Winners never quit.
We've been brainwashed into thinking that quitting is somehow wrong. It's somehow weak. Author Seth Godin is the anti-Lombardi. Life is short. I think most of us would agree. He but says quitting is often the best possible move because it frees us up to thrive where we're better suited. If you have a choice between being unemployed for one, two, three years or sticking with a job that's a dead end, most people are afraid of the unknown, so they will stick with that job. We met a, an individual who quit on his second day of work. Would you advise such a thing? I'm not sure what the difference is between the second day and the 200th day. If I got a job working at a you know, payday loan company, I wouldn't even last two days. Which brings us back to Bill Murphy Jr. After quitting as a lawyer, he went all in on a childhood dream, journalism. And it wasn't one of those ones that gets a million readers. It's one He's now a contributing editor at the publication, Inc. I would not go back. I, would, I, I have no regrets. And one thing's very clear. He's happy. You quit your way to a better life. You know, I call it the joy of quitting.